that part. Uh, that extra gear, the first three steps. Huge strides in the performance that I might not be the player I am today. All right, welcome to another episode of Behind the Gear. And we have the uh, the, the the lucky privilege of sitting down with Ryan Suzuki. Zooks, as uh, they call him, probably Zooks Jr., unfortunately, when you're around your brother. But uh, Ryan, how you been doing, buddy? How's everything going with... Uh, kind of the self-isolation and not being able to hang with your buddies and stuff like that. Are you going crazy yet or you've been hanging in there pretty good? Um, I've been getting a lot of sleep. So, yeah. uh, that's, that's a plus, but, um, you know, I'm starting to go a little crazy. I think we're what, 50 days in. Yeah. Uh, I just saw that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Someone told me that today is 50 days since last NHL game, which, yeah. is, which is the same time yeah. you guys got shut down. So that's crazy, man. So that's, yeah, it's been, hasn't been too fun, but you know, you got to find, find different ways to kind of keep your mind uh, off off this terrible situation so you know i've been doing some you know uh rollerblading and some stick handling stuff like that um caroline's been sending me some workouts to do to kind of keep me fit uh during this time and and then um, obviously video games has been a big part of my life so um <laughs> i think uh just trying to find different ways to kind of keep your mind uh off it and um you know, obviously you spend time with your family, which is uh, another plus for me and Nick who uh, don't get that much time with them. For sure. And for those who don't know who Ryan is, Ryan Suzuki, obviously from London, Ontario, and played his minor hockey here and got drafted to the uh, OHL, the Barry Colts in the first round, played there. And then we'll get into a little bit of your OHL career because now you're obviously, right. as of right now, you're part of the uh, Saginaw spirit. But um, yeah. And then obviously got drafted uh, first round to the Carolina Hurricanes, which is uh, which is awesome. So, um but uh, are there days when you're just like, when you kind of like, let's, well, I know, and first of all, I'd like to thank you for getting up in the early afternoon to do this, uh, to do this today. Cause I know sometimes like, yeah, sleep I'm usually sleeping there now. <laughs> uh, but are there days where you're just like looking at the clock like, Oh my God, it's only like two o'clock or it's only th- like, it's just some days get like a little long or is it, has it been yeah. not too bad? Like yesterday I uh, went up to Barry to get my, uh, Oh yeah. Right. You know, my stuff for my billets and, um, I got there and I felt like I was there for like four hours, but I was only there for about an hour. It was like, <laughs> I don't know. It was, but yeah, like at home, I mean, it's, video games are a big time waster and um, I think time kind of flies with that. But when I'm just sitting upstairs doing absolutely nothing, I'm, I, the time goes so slow. It feels yeah, like. For sure. So, um, yeah, it's definitely a weird time. Um, I don't think we're ever going to see something like this again. Hopefully not for Hopefully not, a while. Yeah. So, um, yeah. yeah, it's just a crazy time right now. How was it up in Barry? How was it to see your billets? I know you hadn't probably seen them in a little. You probably haven't seen them in a little while. Um, how was it to kind of see some human, some other human people? Yeah, it's. Uh, I don't know how to greet people anymore. So. <laughs> it's weird, right? You can't like. Yeah, I saw a buddy. Can't. A buddy just had a kid, and I went over to his house, and I was like. Uh, uh, congrats yeah. buddy like hair, hair, hair yeah. fist pump um yeah it is weird wireless <laughs> yeah exactly um uh, yeah it's like you usually you know, you're usually giving them handshakes and hugging them and but you can't like you're yeah I don't, know, I don't know how it's gonna be after but um definitely a journey it's been weird for sure um but yeah it was good it was good seeing them and um you know, obviously, I spent two and a half years with them, and um, it was tough leaving them. But uh, I think uh, the trade was big for for my hockey career, so um, I think uh, they understood that. But it's yeah. always nice seeing them. No, definitely. Now, do they have do they have kids that built it that you were with? Yeah, them? yeah. Probably good to see yeah, them. I'm sure they missed you. One, yeah, one's uh, Nick's age and one's my age. So oh, cool. They're uh, yeah, we got pretty close cool juniors. Oh, that's awesome. Um, as far as that kind of going through that, I mean, obviously played in Barry for, you know, a couple of good years there. And then when that whole trade happened, did you kind of know what was going to happen? Like, did they talk to you a little bit about it or did you have suspicions that, that you may be on the block or they're going to look at maybe trying to gain some assets for some of you guys and maybe help you guys go on a bit of a playoff run with another team? Did you kind of know what was coming? Yeah. Um, I think because we we had a couple games like right before the deadline, I don't think they were too keen on talking to guys about trades while they're still playing for the team. So they were kind of doing it behind the scenes. And um, I honestly had no idea. And then I just got a call 
two hours before the deadline that I was getting traded to Saginaw. No way. Yeah. And the uh, funny thing was, I uh, so I got a call from my GM in Barry, and he said I got traded to Saginaw. And like not even two minutes after I hung up, I get a FaceTime from uh, Millie. <laughs> And it's just Millie on the phone with uh, the head coach of SAG, uh, Chris Lazzy. Oh, no way. And, there, and he was just laughing. He said, we got you. So that's was, awesome. Uh, that's cool. Because I knew, I knew Laz um, from a couple of years ago. And um, uh, where was it? It probably yeah, was we, a, our, uh, 17s or something, no? Because he was with Sarnia before, was he not? Yeah, I'm not sure. But I don't think it was. It was um, oh, yeah. Our... Uh, Minor minor midget team. We practice in Saginaw for oh, okay. a day with the coaches, and Laz was he was, he was an absolute beauty, and uh, he was just talking to all the boys, and um, and then I ended up playing for his team in Carnival, like that little summer league. Yeah, yeah. So I I ran into him a couple times, and um, he's a, he's a great guy and a great coach. So I was cool. lucky to go there. Oh, that's awesome, man. That's really good. And Mill, Mason Milliman, obviously a good buddy of yours and property of Philly, yeah. but he would have been pumped to, to, to have you come over there and play. And Yeah. Now when you went he, over, go ahead. What are you going to say? No, he was he was just always telling me, he's like, yeah, you should come to SAG. And like we were always joking about it. And then it actually happened and it was uh, pretty cool. Yeah, that is awesome. Now when you went over there, where did you end up living? Did you end up getting your own billet or did you end up bunking up with somebody? Uh, so I, when I first got there i i think i was with millie for a couple of days just until i think my boats were out of town mm-hmm. and then um after that day we i uh, moved in uh, to a new billet and um i think it was the guy i got traded for i'm not sure but um yeah so when i moved in i lived with them it was just me for about a month and then the junior a uh uh, playoffs started and uh, Peter Fleming's team got kicked out. Oh right! And then he uh, he moved in with me. Oh cool! And he was there for about maybe four days, and then we got all sent home. Oh, is so, that, okay. Um, so that's all he got, eh? That's unfortunate. Yeah, he got one practice in. So. <laughs> that was it. But uh, it was funny. Me and him were we were sharing a room, and he's a, <laughs> he snores a lot. So <laughs> um, yeah, so I got to learn a little bit more about Flemmer. So. There you go. Uh, yeah, perfect. Yeah. Um, what were the biggest differences going from Barry to Saginaw? Like just as far as organization, because a lot of times, you know, you hear when kids are looking to get drafted or maybe get traded, this is a good spot to go. This is a different spot to go. This has good, this, this has, you know, these guys have money, this team, you know, whatever it is. Right. But were there any like major differences yeah. that you noticed between Barry and Saginaw as far as like the, the locker room, the rank, the way the guys were treated? Was there anything that kind of, not that one was good yeah. or one was bad, but anything that kind of stood out to you? Yeah. I mean, both organizations, you know, they, they pride themselves in, you know, treating the players well. And, um, obviously, you know, Barry's in a nice location, like right on the water. And then, um, you got SAG, it's kind of a smaller town feel. Um, but I mean, I think just having that small town, you know, it brings everybody together because we all live like two or three minutes away from each other. So it's easy to just kind of go hang out with somebody. And then, um, I think like hockey wise, it's, um, the facility in Saginaw is unbelievable. Like, um, have you seen pictures of it or anything? No, you know what? Yeah, I, I, I have, but yeah, no, I, I'm uh, not, not clear. So you gotta like pay, a me, pay me a nice picture. Room. Pay me a nice picture here. What do you got? Walk in doors. What do you got? Yeah. You walk in the doors and then you got a uh, straight ahead is our theater room. And there's like nice lazy boys in there. Sweet. You know, I go sit down, get my protein shake and just kind of sit back. <laughs> back and, yeah. Sometimes they put up some NHL clips, so yeah, I guess I can just go in there and watch and kind of set up for the day there. Or there's a gym, but um, I'd rather post up in the Lazy Boy. So, <laughs> yeah, well, you gotta have um, your protein shake first, right? That takes yeah. about an hour, so yeah, yeah, yeah. So then the gym's to the left. Uh, we got everything in there. You got bikes, uh, bench racks, there's um, dumbbells, everything. Some boxes to jump on um then once you leave the gym it like connects to a hot tub room sick yeah so i i spent a lot of time in there too yeah um and then you keep going ahead you got the showers the washroom and then ahead of that is the dressing room cool and then 
we got um, the kitchen in the back. We got like a full kitchen. We got a uh, ping pong room, a lounge. It's uh, wow. pretty crazy. It's an NHL setup, basically, right? Like a little, like a pool yeah. locker room there. That's awesome. Man. Like it's uh, yeah. So we put like um, they got this little whiteboard on the fridge, and you just put whatever you want and. You know they'll supply it for you. So that's great, man. Now, would, would you guys yeah, have someone that guys there. would you guys have someone that would like cook for you guys a little bit, like set up breakfast and stuff, or you guys have access to whatever, like microwave and whatever you guys want in there? Um, it it depends. Like on a like on a game day, we'll we'll get some catered food for sure. Um, but it's always funny on a home game. You'll come in in the morning for morning club, and uh, you'll just see Laz, our head coach, just cooking pancakes for all the boys and. He's got the chocolate chips in there, and <laughs> he makes he makes like sixty or seventy of them. And really? Everybody gets two. Yeah, it's crazy. That's awesome. He's man. always in there. He gets in there really early. So that's cool. Oh, that's great. Now, um, during the year this year, I know you suffered a, an injury, and I kind of want to just chat quickly about how it happened and, and kind of what was your first reaction after it happened, as far as you know, probably going down and then getting yeah. up and figuring it out. But what, uh, what, yeah, what exactly transpired when when that? Uh, the injury happened um you know i was i was just trying to make a move to uh the inside of the ice and um i think i had dangled him a little too hard and uh he he was waving his stick and he couldn't get it so he, he caught me in the eye but uh, i know he didn't mean to do it and it's kind of just a fluke thing like yeah it's so not a not a common injury um that i suffered so now um, did it get you know, caught it did it get caught under your visor like the stick or did it just kind of hit and come out it uh, it just hit and came out just straight, straight contact. Like Ouch. most of the time, you're seeing like around the eye. Like usually, your eye's pretty well protected, but yeah. it was just super unlucky. And um, yeah, right after I uh, I knew it was my eye, and um, so I tried to open it, and it was just pitch black. I just remember, you know, I started skating to the bench, and then. I kept trying to look through it and I couldn't see anybody and it was, it was scary that moment. No for sure. doubt. Yeah. For yeah. Sure. And then after I got off the ice, I showered and then, uh, went to the hospital and got some tests done. I think I was in the hospital for like four or five hours. I think they're just doing tests and yeah. like maybe three hours in I could, I started to see like, like their flashlight that they're putting in my eyes. So, um, that was about it. That's crazy. And though. then the swelling took away most of the vision at first. And then once it went down, I started to see a little bit more. And each day as it went on, I started seeing, I guess, a little bit better. But um, I, I still have that blind spot right in the middle. Yeah, that's yeah. crazy, man. It is a scary thing. I um, Not that this story is anywhere near what, uh, what you went through as far as still playing, but I was playing men's league and my own, because I'm an idiot, yeah. my own fault. I, I had a helmet on and didn't have a visor on and. Same thing. Guy kind of went to grab my stick. His stick came up, caught me right in the eye. I ended yeah, up getting. I remember you came there. Yeah, and it was like same you thing though, man. Back. I remember I got swollen right away because I, I did. Did you have a cut around the eye at all, or just hit you right in the eye? Hit me right in the eye, okay. and I had. That's. I had a little cut. Yeah. yeah. So I had a, like twelve stitches. So I was bleeding and whatever. So I went in the locker room, and I remember like pulling my eye up because I couldn't open it because it was so swollen and couldn't see anything and uh, same thing the first thing i'm like oh man no way yeah and then got to the hospital did the same thing did a bunch of tests and my eye was really swollen yeah. for a couple of days but you keep like how often were you just checking it i was checking it probably yeah. like two minutes trying to see if i could see out of it and eventually yeah my yeah. vision did come back a little bit and still not where so it was everything. but yeah yeah every every morning i check it and yeah just kind of test it out a little bit so how how long did that put you out? Because you ended up coming back off that. But how long how long did you or how many games did you miss? How many weeks did you end up missing with that? I think it was two and a half months. Okay, or three months, close to three months. I think is uh, the time I missed because you can't really. There's no point of rushing back. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think um, it was. It's a tough. It's a tough injury, but. Um, you know, guys, guys are reaching out to me and, you know, kind of helping me through it and stuff. And uh, even uh, Manny Mahaltra, he, he called me. No way. That's amazing. And uh, the same, the same thing happened to him. So, yeah, um, it's kind of guys that, guys like that, like, 
kind of reassuring. So uh, yeah. it was good to hear from them. Oh, that's amazing. Because, man, when, when when you suffer an injury, whether it's a broken arm or, bro- or, or what you've got, uh, you know, the difference between an eye is, is man, this, this yeah. could be, you know, way worse than, you know, a broken arm, yeah. obviously. Right. Um, but what was it like going through the rehab and, and it kind of puts you in a bit of a dark place, right? Cause you go from playing yeah. every day, practicing every day, being around the boys every day to now you're basically on yeah. the mend and can't do much for the first little bit and then getting back into it. But how were you kind of headspace wise? Were you getting like a little bit down? Were you, you know, was it obviously nice to be around the guys still a little bit, but, um, you know, how was that mentally on you? Do you find it? hard to go through yeah. an injury like that yeah i think always like always injuries you know they're they're tough they're tough physically and mentally so um, you know the physical part you have to rest and you kind of have to hold yourself back and um stuff like that and then you know it's always a mental challenge like you gotta you gotta get past the point where like you always first thought whenever you get an injury am i gonna play again like um yeah. Like no matter what it is, like how little or how severe it is, you're always wondering if you're going to be the same when you come back. And, um, yeah, I think, um, just kind of obviously hearing from like Manny Mahaltra, you know, he was telling me about, you know, what he was doing to, uh, get back. And he said, you know, you just got to wait and be patient. Like, um, you're going to figure it out. Like it's going to be a new normal for you if, uh, you know, it causes permanent damage. So, um, just kind of hearing guys like that, like that reached out and, you know, kind of with the same injury. And I think, um, there's another guy he played in the NHL. Um, he only had one eye. Is it Berard? Was it? Yeah. Berard. Oh yeah. yeah. Brian. Yeah. He's unreal. Yeah. Yeah. Brian Berard. So, um, you know, just kind of, I looked up guys like that and, um, they still, they were still playing professional hockey long after. So, yeah, I know that's awesome. Yeah. It's kind of, it's just reassuring and, kind of got my spirits up when I was injured. For sure. Cause the tough thing with an eye too, like your arms are good, your legs are good. You, you want to go for a run or you want to go, yeah. do, but you can't do anything. Like you, they don't want yeah. your blood pressure getting up. They don't want any blood going up there. Like it's yeah. really sensitive. So you're, yeah, you're on the shelf for a good couple of weeks to a month of doing nothing, man. Yeah. I was sleeping, sitting up and just kind of trying to drain all the blood out. Yeah. And yeah. yeah. It's crazy. Um, and, and then when you did get back to playing, cause I mean, realistically with any injury, whether it's a leg or an arm or whatever it is, like you said, I think it's a really good point. Like you don't know what you're going to be like when you get back. Are you going to be skittish? Yeah. Is your arm going to bug you? Is your leg going to bug you? Uh, but with an eye, the only way you're going to know how it's going to feel is when you start practicing again and start playing yeah. again. So what was it like when you got back on the ice? Was it a, a big adjustment? Was it kind of take you a week or a couple of weeks just to kind of get kind of used to that new normal kind of as, as Manny Malhotra put it? Um, I think it was, it's definitely tough. Like the first couple times I was on the ice, I was getting lightheaded and cause I, I don't know, I just couldn't see like the puck was just making me like dizzy, like when I was taking on it. But sure. Um, I think most of my skills now are they're like just muscle memory. So I think I could do with my, like almost with my eyes closed, like not totally closed, but, um, but like if I knew where the puck was most of the time, like I could probably just stick handle it. But yeah. Um, but yeah, it was weird. It was, I think the hardest part was kind of like stick, like stick handling through stuff. Like not like if I'm just skating up the ice, open ice, like it was easy. And then taking passes, like long passes. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think those were the two hardest things, but, um, there's one thing that I'm still like, like it's still hard for me is when it's, uh, like the pucks in the air. Yeah. Like it's, it's tough. Like my, uh, depth perception super off. So, it's funny you say that, think, man. Um, my buddies laugh at me, like in men's league. If a puck gets chipped up in the air and it's coming at me, I'm like, I, I look like I'm six oh, years yeah, old I'm trying told. to catch a ball. It's like, it's unbelievable. I miss yeah. it. It's 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 embarrassing actually. It's funny, but uh, I get exactly what you're saying. It's weird, man. Just throwing that one eye yeah. off a little bit, and th- like somebody throws a set of keys at me. I'm just like, oh geez, I got to yeah, really focus. Yeah, Nick threw his Jeep keys at me the other day, and I didn't even try. I didn't <laughs> no, even try. same. It's, just get your body in front yeah. of it. Get your body in front of it. <laughs> It's yeah, yeah. I, it's it is so weird, man. I, I totally get where you're coming from, but obviously you got back to playing. Um, yeah. How many games did it take you, kind of getting back into the rhythm of just not? I don't want to say being scared, but being a little bit, just you know, kind of probably keeping your head away from things a little bit. Yeah. You know, how long did it take to get your nose back in there and get back and you know get going to the front of the net and playing in the corners hard again, kind of to where you want to be to where you like to play? Yeah. Uh, I think it was. I think it was the fourth 
fourth game back. I scored my first goal since the injury, and um, I think it kind of put me in a mental place where like I can still score, I can still can still like contribute with uh, with this injury. So um, I think it was after that it kind of brought my spirits up more, and um, and then since I only played about I think five games with Barry after my injury, yeah. so. So, um, yeah, I think um, when I got to SAG, I kind of uh, really went out and, um, you know, I was playing super well and, you know, I was going, I was going in the corners and especially with the fishbowl on, I can <laughs> get in there, yeah. get in there a little bit more and yeah. throw my body around. But um, I think, um, yeah, after I scored that goal, it, uh, it really opened things up. Oh, it's good. It's a confidence thing too, right? You kind of get that, yeah. that mojo back a little bit that, that maybe you're lacking just from not playing. And then, you know, and then it starts to roll. And then going to Saginaw, uh, you know, getting traded. Now you're on a team with, you know, some, a little bit of weapons and some players that can play. Yeah, how were, how yeah. fun was that for a guy like you who's a highly skilled player, a smart player, to get around, to be around some guys that, that can play and move the puck and make plays? Yeah. What was that? That must have been so fun. Yeah, obviously, um, you know, there's very, they were going for a younger team. Yeah. Um, they traded like, four five four or five guys so um and a lot of those guys were older you know they're top guys so um you know there wasn't much much in Barry for me anymore so um you know they decided to go for a younger team and pick up some younger guys from Saginaw um you know when I got to Sag um I had to drive six hours to Flint the same day to uh play it was no uh, way. right when I got traded yeah I got there maybe half an hour before a game, carrying my bag in, and um, yeah, I've walked past the whole Flint team <laughs> to uh, awesome. to my Sag Saginaw teammates. That's the hockey walk and, of shame, um, right there. Yeah, and um, it's uh, it's pretty crazy. Um, like I got dressed like two minute warm up, and um, <laughs> yeah, it, was, it felt like I was back in like tight hockey. <laughs> yeah. You just put, put, you just pull up to the rink and um, just walk right in. You can dress at home and <laughs> yeah. walk on the ice. And um, but yeah, it was fun. I got to play with uh, Perfetti and Koski that game. And um, obviously, Perfetti is going to be a top ten pick this year in the NHL. So um, you know, he's a special player, and he just sees the ice so well. Um, and I think uh, you know, if I just get to open ice, he'll he'll find me. And if he gets to the open ice. Um, he trusts that I'll find him. So uh, we work really well together. And then um, Koski, he's got a big shot. and um, He can also make uh, some great plays. So, um, you know, me and me and Fats were just kind of looking for Koski with that big one-timer. So um, That's awesome. Yeah, and he's getting open more often than not. So um, it made our jobs a lot easier. For sure. Now, did you guys stick together as a line for most, like mo- uh, up until kind of the season got – Got postponed and then obviously eventually canceled. But uh, did you guys stay together for a little yeah. bit of that. Yeah, majority of the time I was I was playing with them. Yeah, That's awesome. It's fun to get some chemistry with guys and then be able to play with them like night in night out. And then it, it, yeah. I mean, probably look forward to coming to the rink and kind of excited for games and see how many. Yeah, games. like Perfetti, man. He had what? He had 120 points or something like that. Like 115 points. Yeah, he was lighting it up. Yeah, he was. He was. Uh, just get him the puck. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I want to backtrack just a little bit and I know, I know I've had you on before and, and, uh, it was, um, it was awesome. And I think one thing I want to touch on just real quick, going to your first NHL camp and stuff and, and being in Carolina, what was that like for you as, as a youngster? I mean, obviously your dreams to get drafted, you get drafted and now your dream is to play in the NHL. Um, but going to your first camp, what was that like for you as, as, as a youngster? And, and, you know, what are some of the things that you took away from there? Was it a bit of an eye opener for you? Was it, was it, uh, was it kind of what you expected or? Um, I think it's a little bit of both. Like I expected it to be, you know, um, like super intense and um i think um just like i was expecting everybody to work super hard and um, when i got there it, was, it almost felt like they were doing double what i thought so um it was uh pretty crazy like um they're guys that i've been watching for years now um play professional hockey so um like i i loved watching aho yeah in the world juniors when he was with finland and stuff like that so 
And then when he got drafted to Carolina and when he started playing there, I was watching him too. And then, uh, obviously Spatch, I played with Spatch and, you know, I knew how hard he worked and, um, and Barry and he took it to a whole nother level there. So, um, how I good think, is uh, he? Like how good, uh, sorry, yeah. I'm going to pause you. Cause how good was he and Barry? Like, was he pulling stuff like he's pulling in the NHL and Barry? Um, yeah, yes and no. Like in, he, I don't know when, when he started doing the Michigan there, but, yeah. um, he never did that in Barry, but he was always doing cool stuff with his, yeah. Oh man, he could, he could do some crazy stuff with the box. Yeah. He was doing the reverse sauce and he, he, he taught me that. Yeah. And, um, cause I'd always pass with him at the blue line before every game at warm ups, and you do this like reverse, you know, sauce, like he sauce like that. Yeah. He yeah, so for like, those who yeah, those who don't know, like, like sauce normally goes toe. heel to middle, right? Like on a sauce, you go kind of heel the toe on a saucer pass. So if you're got your yeah, blade on the ice, right? Heel. But these guys now start going toe to heel, and I like, I don't think you'd use it a lot in a game, but it, it, it's a hard. It's it kind of spins the puck in a weird way. So sometimes it hits your yeah. blade and it kind of jerks. It kind of moves off it a little yeah. bit, right? Yeah, and it looks it looks actually pretty sick when guys it can pull it off. Cool, yeah. yeah, it looks cool. Yeah, yeah, but he was he could do uh, some crazy stuff for sure. Who else at camp was impressive to you? Like, who else, you know, was like, wow, man, this guy's way better than I thought, or he's, geez, this guy's kind of setting the bar. Um, yeah, I think um, I think goalies were a big difference, you know, because in the OHL you can kind of get a get a weak one through. And uh, at camp, like Reimer and Mrazek, they were, they were super solid. And, yeah. You know, they were tough to score on. And, you know, you had to come in every shot and, you, know, you actually have to try and shoot to score every single time, and you're not just going to get a lucky one. So I think, um, you know, that was that was a fun challenge for me to, you know, try and score on them. And um, but yeah, I think um, I think just everybody like the way Rod Brindamore has that team set up is, you know, everybody's got to pull their own weight. So I think yeah. um, it's you can definitely feel that when you go into the room and every practice, you know, everyone's competing all the time. So. It's yeah. uh, definitely good to see that. Yeah, he's built a good culture there, right? Of just working hard, putting yeah. in time, and, and getting the work boots on and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, I know it's a little bit of a different time now just because we're not sure what's going to happen with, obviously, the, maybe the NHL season coming back. There's obviously you've heard talks of June, July, maybe playing, and and then what yeah. what is training camp going to look like and all that kind of stuff. But for you right now, I know it's a weird time for everybody. It's nice, not nice, but it, everyone's in the same boat, right? There's not, there's not a group of people that yeah. are in a gym and on the ice right now in, in, in Canada or, in, or North America that's that's getting a step up on you. But um, are there things in your mind right now that you're looking forward to for, you know, whenever this does happen, you get a chance to go back to camp, but things that, that maybe you would do differently this time around. Then, and I, I think everybody goes through it as a, as a rookie going to their first camp. It's like eyes wide open, just be a sponge, take it all in. Obviously you're yeah. competing and you're, you're trying for a job, but it's like, man, you kind of, it's more of just a, a, a scouting out period. Right? I think for a lot of players, just like, okay, this is what it is. Now I know what to expect. So going in this year, let's say that everything is kind of normal and you do end up going to camp in, at the end of September. Um, what would it be like for you going in this year? Would it be a little bit different as far as how you'd approach it or how you'd kind of get ready for it or how yeah. you approach your first couple of days there? Yeah, I think um, my first year I was, you know, my mindset was I'm not, I'm not going to play this year so I'm just gonna you know try and hold my own and like not not do too much and you know just be solid and reliable and I think um I mean it's good it's a good way to play like simple and you know I was just doing little things I was doing everything right and just making simple plays I wasn't trying to do too much or anything like that like I wasn't I was always looking for a early early pass and um, but I think uh, this year I want to go in and, you know, hold on to the puck more and you know, kind of show show what I can do with the puck and stuff like that. And, um, you know, just play, like, with a little more confidence and, you know, want to have the puck and not always be looking for guys to pass to. But obviously if they're open, I'm going to make the right play and pass it. But uh, I think uh, just go in there and, you know, hold on to the puck a little bit more. Yeah, I know. And I think, I think it's important for anybody at any age going to tryouts. I think it's important to – or camps or like that, but to, to do what you do well, right? If you're a skater, skate. Yeah. And if you're a passer, pass. If you've got good puck skills and you're smart, then 
showcase that, hang on to the puck a little bit, make plays. Yeah. Um, and I, yeah, I think, and, and that comes with confidence, obviously. And I think, you know, yeah. happens to a lot of players that second year at camp, it's like, whoa, this, you know, he's, he's, he's getting it. He's, he's, you know, much better than he was yeah. the first year and probably not as nervous. You kind of know what to expect. You know, a lot of the guys now yeah. too, which is good. Right. Um, which makes it a little for bit sure. easier for sure. Mm-hmm. Um, what kind of stuff have you guys been doing? I know, you know, Nick obviously had a had a great year this year. Unfortunately, got cut short, but playing, and hopefully they resume, but playing for Montreal. What was it like for you watching him? And, and uh, and you know, it's your big brother. Obviously, you guys are pretty close and played yeah. together a lot growing up as far as battling and competing and stuff. But what was it like kind of watching him play a full season in the NHL? Yeah, I remember the first the first couple games, I was blown away. Um, it, it was really cool to see him up there. And I was always, like I wasn't really watching the game. I was just watching him and um, he was, uh, you know, he was, he looked a little slow, but um, you know, as <laughs> a dig. The, that's a dig. <laughs> as the games went on, he, he started doing a lot better and you know, I, was, I, w- I didn't get to see his first goal, but um, I saw a lot of the other ones and um, you know, it was, it's just kind of, and then it got normal. Like it was normal for me to watch my brother in the NHL and, um, it was uh, pretty crazy. Um, obviously, he was still trying to make the team the first couple games, but I remember I was watching him, watching his first game on the on uh, my buddy's iPad because we were in we were on a road trip. I'm not sure where we were, but um, we were watching his first game, and a couple of my buddies were uh, we were all huddled around his iPad, and um, we we caught the end of the game and went into a shootout. It was actually against Carolina too, okay. and uh, they put. And, um, I think they needed a goal to uh, keep the shootout going, and Nick got sent out. So and I was like, "Oh, yeah. oh my god!" Yeah, because <laughs> he did a cool flip in preseason and scored. And then now they think he's gonna clutch up for the team. But <laughs> um, yeah, it was pretty crazy to uh, watch him go, and he obviously missed. And um, it, was, <laughs> it was a tough first game for him. <laughs> Yeah, but um, I think um, he, yeah, he had a lot of fun. He, I was talking to him after the game, but he was a little upset that he missed, and um, like everybody would be. But um, yeah, it's uh, it was it was pretty crazy to watch him this year. Yeah, I know it's cool, and that's a pressure cooker, man. When you got to like save a shootout and you're the last shooter, especially yeah, as a rookie, first like, game oh, too. Oh, yeah, like, oh geez, here we go. Yeah. Um, but you know what? I I would 100 percent agree with you as far as I find. When players get their first opportunity in the NHL, not all of them, some of them jump in and, you know, you got your Connor McDavid's and these guys that just kind of fly in. Yeah. But a lot of them, I find it takes five, 10, 15 games. And, and if they can get a regular shift and they can get a, some confidence under them, you see them in game one and you see them in game 15 and you're like, whoa, he looks like an actual NHLer now. Where yeah. in game one, he looked like a guy who well, he might be able to play, you know, and then all of a sudden they get that confidence they're playing, they're getting that pace in practice and in games. And then, you know, you watch your brother in game 15 and game 20, you're like, He's on the power play. He's like he's a he's yeah. a legit NHLer right now, you know. And yeah, I think for you. a lot of those young guys too, it's hard because those first nine, ten games, twelve games, fifteen games, you're not sure. Like, am I going to get sent back, or you know, am I going to yeah. get sent down? Like, who knows what's going to happen, right? So it's a it's a bit of um a tough one for sure. But uh, yeah, he had a he had a, obviously a good year. Now for you going kind of on 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 your path, I guess is you know do you guys talk a lot about you know hey like man watch out for this so, you know is Nick kind of giving you a little bit of advice for little things to help you prepare for playing against those men. Cause I mean, you're going from playing against 20 year olds that are old and big and everyone's like, Whoa, that guy's got a full beard and he's yeah. huge. Now you're going to be playing against 30 year olds that are, you know, with kids. Yeah. Yeah. Family, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. Like I'll, I'll talk to Nick about hockey and, um, it'll be, you know, he'll, I'll ask him about this play and he'll be like, yeah, you, a lot tougher like here and he's like I remember um how oh, was it yeah I think um he's just he's just trying to tell me like um like obviously they're older men and um you know you're, you're just this young guy and um they're gonna try and get in your head a little bit too um they're gonna do like little things like poke you with their stick or chirp you about something but um I think um, just protecting the puck in junior and then in the NHL, it's a lot different. Oh, for um, sure, yeah, yeah. Like you got you got Brent Burns on your back, cross checking you in the corner. 
or some little 16 year old. So, um, I think, um, like making sure you're elusive, like tight turns and, you know, I saw, I watched Nicky start doing it a lot more this year and, um, you know, he was just kind of being evasive and, you know, keeping the D on their toes so they can't pin him. So, um, I think once you get pinned by an NHL D man, you're toast. So, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, like, yeah, you're, there's no getting out of it, especially, uh, with those big, uh, six, four guys. But, um, I think, uh, you know, just keeping your feet moving down low and, uh, trying to do things to get, get away from the D is, uh, a big thing in the next level. And I think a lot of those things, like, you know, I'm sure like Nick talks about is, you know, you'll, you'll figure those out as you get going. You're going to try that move that maybe you pulled in junior that worked on every defense and that's yeah. not going to work anymore. Like, okay, I got to adapt this a little bit or that pass that you made through a guy's sticks. Like that's, he's giving it to me, but he's going to take it away in a second. It's not going to make it. Right. Yeah. And I think those yeah. are the things that you figure out on the fly as you're practicing and playing at that level. And, and obviously, uh, you know, getting a chance to, 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 to try it and fail at it and then figure it out as you go. Yeah. Um, what kind of stuff are you guys do now as far as kind of trying to stay in shape and, and, you know, and it's hard because no one's not a lot of players and some do, but not a lot of yeah. players have a full gym in their house, right? Where yeah. you got everything that you need, but what are some no, of the stuff I, that you guys have been doing as far as staying in shape and kind of keeping yourself uh, motivated to keep working out and stuff? Yeah. Ours is kind of like a, kind of like a quarter gym. Yeah. Um, maybe less. Um, we got a couple weights back there. Um, we got a bow flex. So nice. you can juice up the arms there. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, but we don't, we don't have too much. We got a treadmill on a bike and, you know, those are a couple of essential things you need. So, you know, we have all the kind of basic stuff. Um, obviously we don't have super heavy weights. Like, like I can't curl my usual hundreds, but. <laughs> oh yeah. Right. That's right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think, um, it's tough cause we don't, we're used to going in the gym and um, being able to have all that supplied to us. And then now we kind of have to figure it out for our own. And, you know, it's a lot of self-motivation. Um, and, um, you know, it's pretty, it was pretty easy for uh, me and Nick to start working out down here. And um, I think, um, yeah, it's definitely tough. And we've been going for runs now, which I usually don't go for runs at home. Yeah. Um, <laughs> But yeah, I think um, running, rollerblading, just try and get outside because um, I know it's pretty, it's super easy just to stay inside and watch Netflix all day. So, um, you know, just try and get outside for a couple hours a day and um, try and uh, get in the basement and um, do some, whether it's like lunges, you know, it's mostly simple stuff Yeah, because uh, you can't get too crazy down here. And um, you gotta, Yeah, I think uh, just like basic uh, workouts and stuff like that. Yeah, I know it's great. And I'm assuming now that kind of this is like for real, because I think at first when it first happened, and correct me if, if, if you're wrong, if I'm wrong on this with how you thought about it, but I know for me it was like, whoa, okay, this is happening maybe a month, you know, everyone will kind of quarantine or everyone will kind of self-isolate for a month and then things will start to get back to normal, kind of yeah. get going again, right? Now it's obviously going to carry on for a lot longer than that. Um, and now it's like, okay, this is real. So I got to figure out kind of my off season a little bit here. So for you who you know, probably he's not going to be going back to playing this year. Um, the, are you kind of th starting to think that a little bit? Okay, now I got to kind of get into my off season. So getting, you know, I know working with Mitch and those guys and getting your off season program and starting to get into that a little bit to get yeah. a little bit more of a routine, I'm assuming for you guys. So that when you do hit the gym, you're in good shape and now you're ready to start kind of even doing more. Yeah. I think, um, the first, like right when we got sent back, I was thinking, you know, two weeks, two weeks, we're, then we're going back and then we can, you know, start playing maybe a month. Yeah. And then, so I was starting to work out and, and I was doing a workout like pretty much every day. And I'm just kind of trying to stay in shape for when we do go back. And then kind of when they canceled the season, um, I was pretty, pretty upset about that. So, you know, it was tough to, you know, kind of get back into that workout routine. You know, I was like, the season's over. Like I got from now, like, what is it like five months until yeah. I'm back yeah. actually playing hockey. And so, um, you know, I was like, there's no, like I should just take a rest now. And then, so, um, it was tough to kind of push through that, but then I started working out and getting into like more of a routine. And I think routines like huge, just kind of getting, doing everything at a certain time every day. Um, 
it uh, helps helps the day go by quicker. And then um, I think uh, you know it's it's easy to uh, continue to do what you're doing when it's uh, when you know you have to do it at this time and stuff like that. Especially when you have a a lot of free time. So, <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I think um, it was definitely a tough. It was definitely tough on me when they canceled the season. And, um, you know, it was tough on a lot of the guys, especially uh, teams that were building up for a championship run, for sure. Yeah, that's the toughest thing, right? With with any of the teams that loaded up a little bit, maybe got gave away some picks and some players to try to go on a bit of a yeah. run, and then all of a sudden, man, there's no there's no season, which is and no one yeah. saw this coming the way it was going to come, and uh, you know, you, it's, it's not. Uh, it is what it yeah. is, and now we got to deal with it, but. You're, you're right though. I think a lot of players went through the same thing, especially not so much the NHL, just because they may still play. And I know they're kind of on limbo a little yeah. bit. But for a lot of the leagues, like you guys, you guys got so, sent home. All right, we'll kind of we'll stay active for a couple of weeks and go back to the rinks and start playing again. And then then they can't then they cancel the season. So for you guys, like, okay, now we're in our off season. So I'm gonna yeah, take a couple like, weeks, chill out, yeah. and then <laughs> yeah. And yeah. when you really look at the calendar, to your point, you're like. Okay, wait a sec, man. It's five months. Like my off season's five months long, like, which is yeah. which is crazy, right? So yeah, it's a it's a whole new off season this year for uh, for a lot of players in the same boat as you're mm-hmm. in for sure. And yeah. the hard thing is there's there's no guarantee that I mean everyone's hopeful and I I think it will happen, but there's no guarantee that things are going to come back to exactly normal coming in August and September and, and October, yeah. right? So that's yeah. the other thing that kind of sucks for everybody because it's a bit of an unknown as we get moving through this. And yeah, you have no out. idea. Yeah, exactly. It's hard to plan for stuff when you don't know when it's going to happen. So. Yeah. That's why you just got to always kinda, be ready. Yeah. <laughs> you just got to act as if it's opening up tomorrow or the next week or something. Yeah, exactly. So. Yeah. So what are the biggest time sucks for you right now? Like as far as just kind of being at home, hanging out with the family and stuff like that and playing board games and helping your mom with the dishes and cooking and stuff like that. Cause I'm sure you're all over all that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what are your biggest time sucks right now? Like if you had to, if you had to label them, let's say your hours of the day, what would be the number one time consumption in your day right now? And you know, and you don't tell you us hours. So can, don't, don't worry. I'm not going to throw you so far under the bus, but biggest time suck you got right now. Sleeping probably. Okay. That's a good one. Okay. Good. good. Video games. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's it. That's it, eh? No, I'm kidding. I, uh, <laughs> um, yeah, like sleeping, video games, and then, um, what else have I been doing? And then, like, training, like, whether that's like working out or, you know, sticking out like a ball yeah. or something like that. Um, yeah, I haven't been cooking a whole lot. Um, I'd say Netflix. I haven't been on Netflix as much as I thought I'd be during this, but yeah, um, it's always good to get a couple episodes of um, Brooklyn Nine Nine in. So. Oh wow, is that is that the show? Eh? Any other good shows yeah. on Netflix? Anything else that you got into that uh, that you recommend? Have you? Hey, actually, a uh, question for you: Have you watched any of the Jordan the Jordan episodes? Yeah. What do you think? Yeah, I did. I watched all of them. Unreal. Eh? That is, yeah, it's pretty cool. I liked it. Now, did, would you like? I, I know you know who Jordan is, obviously, because everyone knows who he is. But did you? You would have been a little bit young to ever watch him, like kind of play or or be around. Yeah. you know, obviously for any of the. No, brands. I, I knew obviously I knew who he was, and you know I knew like his iconic moments, but I didn't, I didn't really know the full story. Like I never like looked him up or knew because I wasn't alive back. Then. Like, oh, for sure, totally. I wasn't like, yeah. yeah so. um it was good. It was kind of cool to like see like why everybody loved him and like why he was like cherished and why he's super famous and you know, um, just stuff like that. So yeah. was, uh, like I just knew like, Oh yeah, Michael Jordan. Yeah. Like he's, he's the best basketball player ever. And, um, it's kind of the same with like Gretzky. Like when I was little, like, Oh yeah, Gretzky's the best. And then as I got older, like I knew why. Cause yeah. I like, I obviously research guys and you see documentaries like that, that kind of bring light to why they were so great. So and if you look, no, I, if you look at a guy like Gretzky and a guy like Jordan and I grew up kind of watching both of those guys is cause I'm, I'm old, yeah. uh, but, and I love them. Right. But here in the behind the scenes, and I knew they were both competitors, but you look at like how much of a competitor Jordan was and how much he yeah, pushed his teammates and yeah, cross that line yeah. of being a bit of a hard old, but 
man, like he wanted to win. And and I know some, some of the critics said, oh, you're not going to like him as much as he did before. You're going to think he's a bad guy. I love it. I think this guy's, I like him even more now that I've yeah. watched these than I did before, you know, and same thing with Gretzky. Like I remember watching old footage of Gretzky at practice, like old school bag skates and stuff like doing lines. And he's one of the first guys he's working his tail off. And this is a guy who just got like 200 points last season. 200 points. Right? Like crazy, yeah. man. And he's still working his tail off and, so I was, I have so much respect and I, I'm glad I watched it cause I got sucked right into it. I, I was, I watched the first episode. I'll check it out. There's all this hype on it. And I was like, yeah, then like, this is awesome, man. I, I loved it. Yeah. It was really cool. And it's good for young. And I think I it's really them. cool for young players like you to see it too, because this is a guy that you've heard about. You see him on shoes. He's got his own brand. Like, okay. Yeah. Uh, you know, and then now you see the behind the scenes, like, Whoa, this guy's yeah. actually legit for an athlete, I, you know? Yeah. I knew, I knew he was super competitive, but, um, Obviously, you got to see it to uh, really understand, and um, you know it's it's coming straight from him and other people, and um, you know it's all it's all legit stuff about him. So um, I think it was uh, really interesting to watch, and um, yeah, I think uh, you know he's it inspired. I'm it, I'd be surprised if uh, that documentary didn't inspire like other uh, athletes like my age and stuff like that. So for sure. The other thing too that I love about it is is the I feel the like the leadership qualities that he had, you know, just to, yeah. just he, he didn't care. He wanted to win. You if you want to go party, do your thing, no problem. But you better show up at the court the next day and work your tail off. You know, he yeah. just like he wanted to win, and if you want to win, like Rod the Rodman stuff is unreal, eh? Like just the way mm -hmm. what a character yeah. he was, and just like what yeah. a beauty. But you know, Jordan loved him. Like he he was a big part of their success, and he was. You know, he they they respected who he was and how he played, and he could do his stuff off the off the court. That's off the fine. Court. Un, unbelievable, yeah. though. Like, yeah, it was. Yeah, yeah, it was very very cool for sure. Um, and the family's all doing well. Everyone's safe and good. Yeah, everybody's. You know, we're all doing our best to stay inside and um, kind of slow this thing down. So yeah, um, everybody's been healthy. So uh, it's been good. Oh, it's awesome, buddy. Well, listen, I really appreciate you checking in, man. This is uh, this is great, and I'm glad yeah, to hear that you're doing well and. Uh, really, really excited and look forward to seeing uh, us get out of this number one as a as a as yeah. a world, but also uh, getting back to hockey and seeing you. Yeah, seeing you go put up some numbers. Get the TPH sure. family back. There you go, out of way. Yeah, we got to get back in the gym for sure and on the ice, yeah. guaranteed. All right, buddy, that was yeah, awesome, man. Thanks a lot. A little more. What's that? I can put it through your skates a couple more times. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I let you. It's because I let you. <laughs> All, All right, right buddy. Sure. Thanks, man. Take care. Uh, yeah. Okay. You too. Gear, the first three steps, huge strides in the performance that I might not be the player I am today.